Hey Savvy Devs, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Elementary OS 5.1 Hera. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. So Elementary OS just released a new update, and there have been quite a few great updates with this new version of Elementary OS 5.1, known as Hera. I noticed that the installer took about the same amount of time as it did with 5.0. It doesn't seem like the updates really changed anything when it comes to that. And the instructions are exactly the same as they were before in order to install the operating system. So what are the updates? Well, you can see one update right here in front of me, which is the brand new onboarding experience. Some other things that they've had updated with this new version of elementary OS is they have a brand new greeter which gives the user a new login experience. There's been updates to accessibility, updates to the system settings, improvements and updates to the native apps. There's now a flat pack support with their app center. And of course, the latest hardware support because they've updated the Linux kernel. So this is what you're gonna be welcomed with as soon as you log in. You are now welcomed by this brand new onboarding process that walks you through a few things that are available and special to elementary OS. Well, the first thing that we see here is uh, you can go through the basic guides, get into the community support, or even get involved. Uh, of course, you have the skip all button here if you wanna skip everything, but let's go ahead and see what else is here. They got some housekeeping. So now you can actually automatically delete files after 30 days, which you could do before, but now you're kind of given the option as you walk through here in this new onboarding experience. If we go next, it tells you about the App Center and how to get applications for new users, as well as it tells you about opening up system settings and customizing your experience here on elementary OS. So if you hit get started, now you'll be on your Pantheon desktop screen. This distribution to me has always resembled Mac OS, and it looks very stylish and uncluttered here in the background. Uh, what I'll do here is uh, have a little comparison of what the last one looked like so you can kind of see what the desktop environment on 5.0, which is what we're looking at right now, known as you know, and what the desktop looks like on the brand new elementary OS 5.1 Hera. Not a whole lot of has changed on the desktop, but we'll go ahead and go through some things that have. First thing I want to do is uh, show you the new greeter. So let's go ahead and log out. So currently I'm logged in as Savvy Nick. I'm gonna log out here. After I hit the log out button, we'll get a new screen. And this is a much different than what they had before. So we can do a quick comparison. That might help us out here. So let's go back to the version 5.0 and log out as well. And now you can see how different the two are. So you don't really have any kind of a picture here. And what the picture is, is of the background that's used on the desktop. So if you change backgrounds, you'll see that background displayed per user. So if you have more than one user, you'll see more than one background and more than one name that you can select through here instead of having it in a list on uh, 5.0 here. So let's go ahead and log back into both of those. And if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, make sure you take a moment and subscribe below for future reviews and installs. One thing that I did notice is that they did make a few tweaks here to the desktop environment. There hasn't been many changes. Just a little tweak here on the icon for the internet connectivity. If you click on this little icon, you get your current wired connection and you can go to the network settings. Uh, if we compare that to the 5.0 version, it's just a little different icon here. Very similar layout, of course, once you click it. So that's really the only thing I've noticed that's different between the two. Everything else has really remained the same. Also here at the bottom, their dock, everything seems to be the same as well, as you can tell between the two. Even the applications line up in the same order. So nothing has really changed besides the wallpaper, of course. Overall, I really like their layout and how they just allow everything to blend into the background, giving you a uncluttered feeling to their desktop. I'm a really big fan of this. So something that I'm excited about is there's a new application available called Sideload, which allows you to sideload flat packs. So let's go ahead and install a flat pack. We'll use their browser, Epifany, and start that up. And I already have 
the URL ready for the flat pack available for Spotify. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is to install that. We simply click install and if you open up the downloaded file here, the flat pack reference file, it's going to fetch details and then we should be able to install it with their native application side load. Give this a few moments here. We hit the understand button and hit install anyway and it's off on its way installing Spotify. So after the install is finished, it'll tell you it's successfully installed and you can simply hit open app. And there you go. Now you have Spotify installed. So let's go ahead and exit out of Spotify. You can do this with any application that's available as a flat pack. One other thing that they're boasting is the App Center got an update as well. It has a small redesign and a mega speed boost with uh, the elementary team claiming that it has up to 10 times faster speed than it did in the previous App Center. And this will allow you to use those extra resources that were being used on various other processes instead. Not only has the App Center received performance boosts, but their other native apps have also received upgrades in performance as well. So make sure to check out some of the other apps that come standard with elementary. It does seem much more fluid and uh, applications just seem to open up a lot quicker. They also have this new icon that kind of scrolls while they're loading in the application preview. And then you can use this little carousel to go around. Not sure if you had these arrows available last time or not, but they kind of pop up out of nowhere and you can use them. This might have been an automatically moving thing or you would have had these little icons at the bottom in order to scroll through images. So let's go back home. Let's go ahead and choose an application to go ahead and download and install here. Maybe an audio application. Let's go ahead and choose Byte. Something just to try out here. And we got to authenticate real quick. So put in a password, hit authenticate. And we're running through. And it looks like it's already done. So we can hit open. It should pop up. Everything is very quick to load here. Uh, I, definitely the application center has seen a great improvement in how fast it goes through apps and installs here. This is a great thing to look forward to and use. If you went ahead and made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. We'll exit out of this and look at a few more things here. Maybe some of the new items that they've added in as well as just give a brief look over the desktop for new beginner users who might have not had any experience with elementary OS. So one other tidbit is that they've added new display settings into elementary, now offering you more options for the refresh rates and even updates to aligning multiple screens. So if we go into the display settings, system settings here, hit displays, and if we hit this little cog, you'll see the refresh rate. Now, mine's grayed out, but uh, if you do have a screen that supports up to 120 hertz, you can go ahead and now change this through the drop down. As well as if you have multiple screens, you have more options in how you align the screen, whether it's on the left, bottom, right side, which you can read about more through their documentation, which also supply a link in the description below to go exit out of these settings. And real quick for beginner users, let's just go ahead and explore the desktop real quick since we've already explored most of their main applications, such as the software center, how to download and install a flat pack. And we saw their default web browser up in the top right corner. You have a portion of their taskbar where you can shut down the computer, log yourself out or lock the computer. You have notifications, so if you get new updates or applications are trying to notify you, this is where you'll get them. The current battery power, if you have a laptop computer, and change up power settings if you want to. Then you have your wired connection or wireless if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network instead. You can also get to network settings from here. Then you have your volume control, and if you're playing any music, then in the middle here, you have your date and time. If you click on it, you'll get a calendar, which you can review and look through. It also tells you if you have any events for today. 
On the left hand side, we've already used this a couple times, but it's applications. So any application that's installed on elementary OS will show up in here. You have these little dots to scroll through various pages. And you can see that we installed Spotify before, so it's in here now. You also have a second type of a view if you like subcategory view with the respected applications inside of each subcategory. One thing I will mention is that you cannot put applications in the backgrounds or any files, so you can't stack items back here, which is one thing I don't necessarily like, but it does make for a better and more uncluttered experience here in elementary OS, so I can appreciate it, or at least appreciate the reason for why they do so. In system tools, you'll be able to go through and edit your system settings. You have various devices to make edits to if you want, printers, the power, mouse and touchpad, sound displays, and many other things such as sharing, universal access, which elementary OS has made updates to as well. Let's go through the file manager since we haven't done that yet real quick. If we go to system tools and hit files, it'll bring up the file manager here native to elementary OS. You can create multiple tabs up here if you want to create a new tab. You can open in a new tab or simply click the plus arrow over here and create as many tabs as you wish. The first thing you see is the home directory of the current user you're logged in. There's different types of views as well. You can toggle through these and choose whichever one suits your needs. On the left hand side you have some shortcuts available as well which is a little redundant here since we're already in the home folder and the same shortcuts are appearing on the left hand side. You also have access to the file system as well as the ability to look at the entire network or connect a server that's on the network. If you right click you'll get a few more options such as showing hidden files and creating new folders or empty files as well as going through properties for each individual directory that you're in. That's really it for their file manager. We're going to go ahead and exit out of there. Finally, one other thing I'd like to check out is their terminal. I know they've created a small little change to this, and what they've done is actually made the background a little darker, less transparent, and everything else has really remained the same. I do like the fact that they did this. It makes it a little easier to see what commands you're typing in. So like LSAL, I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger for you so you can see. But you also have different types of themes if you want to go ahead and scroll through them real quick instead of editing it and making your own theme. I do like the dark one the most and that's what it comes with by default. And what you can see you have uh, pretty much a gray color for your commands that you're typing in. It's fairly easy to see. The blue is even better so on some of the hidden files which are probably hidden folders and uh, folders that you have they show up in blue and then you have other files that are showing up in a darker gray color the current user and host name show up in an olive green color and if we log in as a super user let's check that out that's one thing I like it does show you the characters that are being typed in as asterisks as you're typing in your password so you at least have a character count on how many characters you've used in your password so far when you log in as the root user, the color doesn't change. The color does not change for root, which in some distributions they do do that, kind of giving you an indication of that you're using the root user. You can also create multiple tabs in here, so as many as you want. And clearly, the default zoom setting that we went ahead and changed stays changed as you create new tabs. Some distributions do not do that. Overall, just a minor change to the terminal, really just the coloring scheme. And it's really even hard to tell. It's just a little bit of a darker color here. I know it is mentioned on their posted updates. An elementary OS is an Ubuntu-based stable release branch that uses its own custom desktop environment, as I mentioned before, called Pantheon. It seems actually geared to uh, Mac OS users since the environment has uh, a similar layout here. I personally use a Mac, so I'm partial to their desktop environment here. And uh, I really like what they've created. I do enjoy using it. And with that being said, I'm just going to give it a few ratings here. Elementary OS is steadily gaining in popularity and really focuses on creating an ecosystem for the user with the apps being developed by Elementary and meant to be used by the Elementary OS, giving the user a great experience and performance boost. 
it gets a popularity rating of 7 out of 10. It's simple to use since there's not a lot of clutter and it seems to focus on keeping the learning curve to a minimal when transferring from other operating systems such as Mac OS. I also enjoy how they build the user experience around an ecosystem of their own available applications and have just introduced the use of Flatpaks, which will allow for more applications to be used by their OS and that's why I'll give it a user friendliness rating of 9 out of 10. There have been quite a few updates to elementary OS Hera in order to improve the performance of their native apps as well as the App Center. And you can really tell the change in performance because they have a focus on perfecting their own applications. It's definitely come a long way since uh, the last update, 5.0, you know, and I'll give it a performance rating of 8 out of 10. This distribution now allows the use of flat packs and allows you to install them using their native app called Sideload, as well as they offer a range of applications needed for everyday desktop users. You really have everything necessary and available to you now, so it gets a features rating of 8 out of 10. And finally, it seems to have a nice but small community supporting it. They are heavily focused on the user experience, and I think that's what allows them to thrive here. Also, it's based off of Ubuntu, and there's plenty of available online resources for support, and it gives it a sustainability rating of 8 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 40 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Elementary OS 5.1 Hera. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.